Well, the Satanists are at it again. A bunch of people in my church last week sent me this ugly image here in the bottom right hand of the screen. It is the Unbaptism 2022 ceremony hosted by the Satanic Temple Dallas-Fort Worth at the Pr Pagan Pride Fest. Guess where they had it? Tyler, Texas. That's right, the Diocese of Bishop Strickland. We'll talk about that a little bit more. He's probably, of all the bishops in the U.S., the most faithful Catholic bishop there in Tyler, Texas. And, of course, that's where the Satanists are hosting their unbaptism ceremony. We'll say our prayer here. We'll talk about baptism today. We'll talk about unbaptism. And before I run the clip uh, from the unbaptism ceremony in Tyler, I'd like to ask you to go ahead and like the video, give it a thumbs up, share it on Facebook so we get more people in here. And of course, if you're new, please do subscribe and hit the little bell to be notified. Okay, here is the unbaptism footage. What they do is, is they have you come up to, I guess, one of their clergy and they take, they make the sign of the cross upside down on your forehead and then you recite, Hail Satan, blasphemy, sacrilege. Now you remember when you're baptized, you're either submerged in water three times or water's poured upon your head three times. The important thing is that your head is involved in the waters of baptism. That's how it works. That's how it's valid. And that the priest says, Name, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And on Father, there's a poor Son, there's a poor in Spirit, there's a poor on the head. Or if it's by immersion, there's a dunking at Father, a dunking at Son, and a dunking at the Holy Spirit. The head is the important part. Of course, in the Catholic Church, after you're baptized, the priest takes holy chrism, sacred chrism, which is a holy oil, and with his thumb, his thumb, signs the sign of the cross on your forehead. If you're a baby, he signs the cross on your forehead, and he seals you for Jesus Christ. This imagery, of course, comes from the book of Revelation, the Apocalypse, and I have a new book. It's a bestseller. Thanks, everybody who bought it. Antichrist and Apocalypse that explains all this and how it relates to the end times. And it's all the Catholic church fathers, saints, explaining what this means. Not my opinion, what they said. Okay, so now that you know what a so-called unbaptism is, which is impossible, I'm going to read from you from the Catechism of the Council of Trent how an unbaptism is impossible. Yet here they are trying to do it. Let's roll it. This is in Tyler, Texas. One moment while I get the audio up. And here it is. You know, hear it. You can hear him say, Hell Satan. It's just sad. These people. So there it is. So people are having fun. They're laughing. They think it's cute. They're trying to get unbaptized. Now, I want to make a few observations about this. You've heard evangelicals or other people saying, you know, baptism doesn't matter. Baptism is a symbol of your belief. It doesn't do anything. Baptism doesn't save you. What saves you is your faith or all that. The New Testament disagrees. All right, on the screen, you'll see 1 Peter 3, 
verse 21. Whereunto baptism being of like form now saveth you also, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the examination of a good conscience towards God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Baptism saves you in an instrumental way. Christ saves us and we receive the remission of sins by faith. We are justified by faith and works. James chapter 2. In the instrument by which we receive that salvation, that justification by faith, is the sacrament of holy baptism. It is an instrumental, in Catholicism we call it an instrumental cause of our justification and our salvation. That's what baptism is. Now, you'll notice that Satanists, when they want to, to promote their cause, when they want to blaspheme and do sacrilege, do the Satanists have a praise and worship meeting? No. Do Satanists have a big tent revival? No. Do they have a Methodist service or a Lutheran service? No. Satanists have black masses to mock the Catholic mass. Satan knows which version of Christianity is the true one? It's the Catholic version of Christianity, the original, ancient, 2,000-year-old Catholic Church with her Catholic Mass and the Catholic Baptism and the Catholic Sign of the Cross. This is what they mock. This is what they make fun of. We, on Ash Wednesday, receive ashes in the form of a cross. They're inverting the cross and saying, not hail Christ or hail Mary, they're saying hail Satan. So you see these things they're putting up on Instagram. Look, these things right here, get unbaptized. That's what they're posting. And then they're having these, you could call them liturgical services, where people are seeking to be unbaptized. Now, can you be unbaptized? The answer is definitely no. If you are validly baptized, you can never be unbaptized. You could commit every mortal sin in the world. You could never be unbaptized. Why? Because baptism works ex opere operato. What does that mean? It means it works in the very fact that it is performed, that it is done. It is, it is performed by the performance. When you are baptized validly, you are baptized. And the Catholic Church teaches that a character or a seal is placed upon your soul when you're baptized, and it can never be removed. We call it an indelible character, is the theological term. Indelible means undeletable, cannot be deleted. So you can go to hell forever, and you will have in hell the indelible character of baptism if you die in rejection of God or in mortal sin. That's the official teaching. So I think it's interesting here that when it comes to wickedness, Satanists are talking about Catholic sacraments, not evangelical praise and worship or their altar calls. No, they're doing the inversion and the perversion of what we Catholics do. Satan is, uh, is attacking authentic. Auth Authentic Christianity, which is Catholicism. It's the real deal. Now, I'm going to read from you from the Catechism of the Count, uh, Council of Trent. It says, regarding this character, By baptism, moreover, we are sealed with a character that can never be effaced from the soul. It can never be effaced. So, when you're baptized, a number of things happen. First off, your soul receives this character, this indelible character that can never be effaced from your soul. It's there for eternity. You also, if there's no impediment, you also receive the remission of sins, original sin, mortal sin, and venial sin. If you're just a baby, it's just original sin. If you're an adult, it's venial sin and mortal sins are also remitted. You also are justified, which means you receive the righteousness of Jesus Christ. 
and you receive sanctifying grace. Grace is the life of the Holy Trinity. It's shared with mankind to redeem us. And we are given the sanctifying grace, also called habitual grace, residing in our soul. And the most important thing you can do as a human person is die in this life with sanctifying grace in your soul. If you die with sanctifying grace in your soul, you're saved. You'll make it to heaven. You might go to purgatory. You'll make it to heaven. If you die without sanctifying grace, you will go to hell. Sanctifying grace is what matters. It's the indwelling of God's grace, and it allows the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, to take up their dwelling, their presence within your soul. That's what saves you. We don't save ourselves. God saves us, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So, these Satanists, when they're doing the unbaptism, you put it back on here. The, I'll keep talking while I look at it. These Satanists, while they're doing the unbaptism, they are not removing the character of baptism. In other words, if they repented after this, they wouldn't have to get baptized again. Their original baptism would still stick. What they are doing is they are formally renouncing the indwelling of the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. They are formally renouncing. That guy's smiling right there. He has no idea what he just did. They are formally renouncing God's grace inside their heart, in their soul. They are graceless in this moment. And they are receiving a, a satanic, quote unquote, sacramental upon their forehead. And they're literally sealing themselves for Satan. And they're saying the words, Hail Satan. When we're baptized, what do we do? We pray thee, our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. That's what we say when we're baptized. They say, Hail Satan. So, they're not removing it, but they are removing from their soul the life of God in them, sanctifying grace. They're also abandoning all hope, all joy in this life. You can make... Father Ripperger was on here a uh, week before last. He's talking about all these people who make pacts with the devil. The devil has no authority to make a covenant pact or deal with you, but he tricks people into it. And it always ends well. It's like doing a business deal with a guy who is a swindler and a convict and a cheat and a liar. Why would you ever do business with a liar? All he wants to do is hurt you. Yes, he'll make you temporarily powerful or give you some skill or some person that you want. But it's a crooked deal. You're taking a bad deal. Do not take it. Now, if you're one of these people who has done, I imagine there's people going to watch this video because they're like, oh, here's some Catholic guy talking about our unbaptism. I'm going to go watch it and see what this fundamentalist has to say. If you're one of these people watching, Christ died for you. He loves you. He wants you to be in heaven. You've renounced him. You're serving the wrong team. You're serving Satan. He still gives you a second chance. You need to repent. If you already are baptized, and you've had this unbaptism ceremony, you have to go to a Catholic priest in the sacrament of penance. We call it going to confession. You go into the confessional room, into the box, and you got to confess all your mortal sins, all your grievous, grave heinous sins to the priest in kind and number. So you say what kind of sin it was and how many times you did it. For example, I robbed a bank five times. You have to say I robbed a bank five times, not four times, not six times, five. If you don't know the number, you say about five times or about 10 times or about a thousand times or about once a week for the past 10 years, whatever the sin is and the frequency. But if you have 
gone through an unbaptism rite, you can regain the graces of your baptism by going to confession, receiving absolution from a priest, and doing your penance. The grace of God will come back into your soul. The Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit will take up their residence once again in your heart. And you can be saved. You persevere in that way until your death. If you don't do this and you live in this state of unbaptism, when you die, you will be judged by Jesus Christ and you will go to hell forever. And you might say, well, I'll go to hell. All my friends are there. We'll have a good time. I'd rather go to, to hell with the sinners. They're fun. And go to saints in heaven. They're boring. No, 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 no. You don't understand. You're on fire. Your interior soul, your mind is grieved because of what you have lost for eternity. Everything good, everything pure, everything joyful will be stripped away from you and you will be in the abyss where everybody hates everybody else. There's no friendship in hell. There's no love in hell. There's no tenderness in hell. There's bitterness and anguish and torment and regret and sadness. Please do not go to hell. If you've never been baptized, repent and be baptized and enter the one church, which is the bride of Jesus Christ. If you are baptized, and maybe you haven't done the unbaptism ritual, this nonsense that the Satanists are doing, pushing on people. But you've committed mortal sin. There's an easy cure. You go to confession. First thing you do when you commit a mortal sin is you begin clean up right away. You say to God, I am sorry I have just sinned in your sight. I am sorry and I am not going to do it again and I'm going to get to a priest. You must talk to God. You must tell him your plan. You must make a plan. You don't say, well, I sinned a mortal sin once. I might as well just do five more mortal sins. No, that's not love. And that's not repentance. That's called gaming the system. And it's God will not be mocked if you try to play that game. If you're in mortal sin, even right now, say, God, I'm in mortal sin. I've sinned this way. Tell God how you've sinned. And I want to go to confession as soon as possible. I'm going to confess my sins. I'm going to receive your grace again. I'm going to start over and just live that way to your rest of your life and look to Jesus Christ. He's the one giving you the grace, giving you the faith, giving you the hope, giving you the love for him and for your neighbor. You got to do it. All right. Now, last thing. Why are young people or these people Getting unbaptized. You know, why? Why are these people? You know, the, that girl right there on the screen getting unbaptized. That was a little girl at some point who loved Christmas. Loved the nativity scene, maybe. Baby Jesus. She was baptized. Catholic. Ba I don't know what, how. But I mean, at one point she wasn't this way. And now there she is asking for someone dressed up like a warlock to put an inverted cross on her head and say the horrible word, words, hell, Satan, and, and renounce Jesus and renounce God. Why are these people doing it? They need to know that God is real, that Christ really died on the cross, that he has compassion for them, that heaven is real, that hell is real, purgatory is real. They have a second chance. I mean, these people are smirking and laughing. They think it's cute. They have no idea. They're basically putting a death sentence on their forehead. We've got to become a church that reaches these people somehow. I've met a couple ex-Satanists who were all under the dark magic and occult and all that, who became Catholic again. They were miserable. They were living a life under satanic dominion. They became Catholic. 
They found the traditional Latin mass. That's what's interesting I found. These people who have been in the real darkness, Satanism, warlocks, they're attracted when they find Christ to the Latin mass. Why? Because there's reverence. There's power in the prayer, purity in the liturgy. You know, it's not sentimental and hee-hee and cutesy. They find a bedrock, a foundation. They've been under Satan. Now they want to be under Christ. Where is that most clear? Where is he, where is he most revered, most honored? They find themselves in more traditional communities, the traditional Latin mass. Also, if you need an exorcism, the Novus Ordo Parish doesn't even really believe in that stuff in a lot of instances. If you want to find an exorcist or an exorcism, you end up traveling into the traditional Latin mass communities because they actually believe in the devil and in demons and that you can be possessed and that there are men trained, like Father Ripperger, who was on two weeks ago, trained in exorcism to remove the demonic from your life, whether you're under obsession, possession. We went through the six uh, levels of demonic influence to remove that. All right. We'll pray our Hail Mary in Latin, Oremus. And we'll pray this for all these people who went through this satanic ritual that they come back to Jesus Christ, Oremus. Nomine Patris et Fidi et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. We're praying the Hail Mary, which is the second paragraph down on the screen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, or per nobis peccatoribus, nunc et et or mortis nostre. Amen. Nomine Patris et Fidi et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. All right. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to all the Patreon folks who support this channel. If you want to be a supporter and have me uh, mail out a rosary and a, a book on the rosary and, and a bunch of other great stuff, go to patreon.com forward slash DR Taylor Marshall. This morning after mass, I met a great man who was just baptized this past week. He got the traditional Roman baptism as an adult. Awesome. And uh, he had also gone to patreon.com forward slash DR Taylor Marshall. He got a rosary. He got rosary in 50 pages, my book. Sent it out to him. You can be one of those people too. Just go to patreon.com forward slash DR Taylor Marshall. And there's a bunch of different packages and ways that I can say thank you. I'll we'll send you rosaries, one book, two book, three book, four book, all kinds of options there. So go check it out at Patreon. All right. Make sure you're praying your rosary every single day. A rosary a day keeps the devil away. You got to pray the rosary. As you heard Father Ripperger say two weeks ago, the devil hates Our Lady, hates the fact that a woman, just a woman, just a girl, is the holiest creature of all. And he who was once so holy as Lucifer has fallen so low into the abyss, into darkness, into ash. And yet she is illuminated perfectly by the grace of her son, Jesus Christ, predestined by God the Father to be the mother of our Redeemer and Savior, the Blessed Virgin Mary. Pray the rosary every day. We were with a friend last night. We were talking about Christianity, Catholicism, sacraments, and we literally just went through the 15 mysteries, the 15 decades of the rosary, and it told the whole story. Beautiful. That's what the rosary is. So pray your rosary every day or you're not on the team. Also, you may have noticed that I did not last week give away the rosary for the Patreon people and for the new St. Thomas Institute students, the raffle. So I will be back today or tomorrow. And if you want to be in that raffle to receive a beautiful seraphim rosary that retails for a lot. These are beautiful handmade, hand cast rosaries. We will be giving uh, that one away since we missed it. 
at the end of October. And if you want to be part of that raffle, that giveaway, that lottery, you can go to patreon.com forward slash DR Taylor Marshall, as I said before, or you can go to newsaintthomas.com and all students at newsaintthomas.com, the New St. Thomas Institute, will also be included in the giveaway. All right, so two options there. So go for it. All right, friends, thanks for watching. And remember our Lord Jesus Christ is you're the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty. God bless, Godspeed, and happy All Souls Day, November 2nd.